I'm back with Bob Wilbur, and off to my right is Pug Horton, and we were talking while the camera was shut off about some of the more quote-unquote modern figures of the 40s, and I had asked you about Don Bias. I don't know if you had had contact with him, whether it was going to the repair shop and getting your horn fixed at the same time or something? No, I heard uh, first uh, heard Don, uh, I think he was playing with Coleman Hawkins on 52nd Street, and he was one of the principal followers who basically his style was based on, on uh, Hawkins to a great extent, but he had a, a very distinctive sound on the, on the tenor. and. He was particularly a marvelous ballad player, yeah. uh, but he had great uh, harmonic sophistication and uh, just a marvelous, marvelous player. When you were in New York in the 50s, did you cross paths with Ben Webster at all? You know, I didn't. By then, I think, was he, was he with Duke? Well, in the time. 50s, he might have been freelancing, freelancing around New York. Yeah. He went to Europe in 64. But I don't think I even ever met him. I was a great admirer of his, yeah. his playing. He was also certainly an offshoot from Coleman Hawkins, who was the father of the tenor sax and jazz, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Lester? Did you uh, ever see Lester live? Oh, many times, yeah, yeah. I didn't see him in the original with the Basie band. Yeah, that was a little before my time. But uh, I saw him when he was leading his own, usually a quartet at uh, Birdland, often uh, in New York. And uh, by then, there's all the pictures of Lester when he was playing with Count Basie. He's holding the horn up like this, and then gradually, as he got older, the horn came down and by the time I think he was playing maybe with a horn just like this. Yeah. And his, his playing uh, had changed, it basically the same style, but it was, I, I think the memorable recordings of Lester was of the only ones he made with Count Basie yeah. as a young man. And he had his own style, which was very popular. The other prominent uh, saxophone player we didn't, besides Ben Webster and and Coleman Hawkins and Lester Young and everybody, was Bud Freeman. Oh yes, who played, who came up with the Chicago Gang in the twenties with like, Frank Teschmaker, who died very young, oh, an important jazz clarinet player, uh, and Bud was with, with Tommy Dorsey, with Benny Goodman, with different bands. When I met Bud, he was freelancing around New York. He was the only saxophone player that was acceptable to Eddie Condon when he, mm. Eddie had his club. Uh, but he was had his own style. He was a marvelous composer. He wrote many, many beautiful songs and uh, very complicated uh, up-tempo songs for the uh, saxophone. And there's an LP where you and he are the front line. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, we we were together in the world's greatest jazz band, and one of the features of our concerts was was always on every concert we, there would be a duet with Bud and I playing. Uh, I would be playing my curved soprano, and he'd be playing his tenor, or sometimes I would put, be playing clarinet. So that became a regular feature of that band. Yeah. I remember seeing the two of you do this in concert in 1970. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I was right. I was there. Um, another saxophonist nobody talks about. Uh, I'll toss two more names at you. One of them is a fellow named Pete Brown. Oh yeah, Pete Brown was a, a wonderful uh, alto player from the that swing era, yeah. and he was had a, a style that was like a jump jump alto, and didn't sound like anybody else. He had his own sound. And what was the band that he played with? Um, the Three Brown Jugs. Who <laughs> was it? The Three Brown Jugs. The Three, Three Brown, Brown Jugs. Yeah. Uh, there, he was with Frankie Newton for Frankie a while. Frankie Newton, yeah. right. On Fifty Second Street. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, you you have a story for us about Johnny Glazel, who you mentioned before, wanting to bring down Thelonious Monk. Oh yes, well Johnny was going to uh, Yale, and they uh, they had wanted to bring up different guest artists to play a concert with the the band, the jazz band at Yale, and so. Th- they sent Johnny down because Monk was working at uh, the Village Vanguard in the village, and so they sent him down. And his job was to try to hire Monk to come up to uh, Yale for a concert. So I, I was in there and it was on, on a break with the, the band, and I went up to the stand and said, uh, uh, "Oh, wait a minute." I'm talking about uh, John. Call asking asking him about coming up to play. Asking okay. uh, who about Thelonious Monk? Thelonious Monk, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Monk. Uh, I'm I'm John Glazel, and I'm a student at Yale. And we have a little jazz group there, and we would love to have you come up as a guest artist with the band. Uh, now, could you? Would you like to do it? And he says. Yeah, sounds interesting. Sure, yeah. Uh, now they wanted to know uh, how much it would cost to bring you up to play with our band up there, and uh, and he said, "Oh, it would cost a grand." <laughs> and Johnny says, "You mean you mean a thousand dollars?" And Monk says, "True." <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that gig never. Uh, materialize no, as a result. Didn't, didn't materialize, no. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one way of saying True. no. True, one word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, if we're going to speak about Monk, did you cross paths with Dizzy? Uh, yes, I did. In the 50s or so. I, well, I, I knew Dizzy from the, uh, uh, the first jazz festival ever held, which was the jazz festival in Nice in 1947, and he was uh, featured there with his big band. And I'd, I'd already heard the, the big band in per, per person, and I, and I knew their recordings. And uh, I don't think, well, I got to, I got to know him not, not well, but, uh, yeah. but I was a great admirer of Dizzy, and, and I uh, heard Dizzy and Bird Charlie Parker when they first played on 52nd Street and collected their records and everything. And that was, of course, the beginning of the the whole bebop movement it was with Thelonious Monk being a really important piano player, or one of them. Uh, but they were a marvelous team, Dizzy and Bird. They just seemed to think and <coughs> phrase together perfectly. And Bird also came up <coughs> to Boston in the late 40s, early 50s, I think, too. Yeah. And, and gigged up there. <coughs> Let's stop for a sec. Yeah. 